Hi everyone, I'm Coral. Welcome back to my channel. I am here today with a stack of books that are old and spooky. And um, this ki idea kind of, you know, came off the wave of Garbagus, which was hosted by Ollie at Criminali, and not only that, but the paperbacks from Hell collaboration that won from Plague by Visions put together so kindly. Um, if you haven't seen that, I'm gonna leave a link. I was asked to participate in that and it was so much fun and the finished product is just absolutely beautiful. There are so many great content creators um, in that video, so many great recommendations and you, if you haven't seen that, you definitely should. So I was thinking about that. I was thinking about October and how it's spooky season almost. So I'm here with um, a couple vintage horror books that I've read and I've really loved and I think you would love too. I, I'm not including one of my very favorites because I talked about that in um, the collaboration on Plagued by Visions. So if you're curious to hear what that is, you'll have to go watch that. But anyways, let's get on with the other ones that I've chosen here. The first one here is The Nest by Gregory A. Douglas. This was published in 1980, and this is kind of a creature feature story. This is about these giant cockroaches that start killing people on this like tiny New England island. Um, I recently watched the movie that there's a movie based on this book and it is not nearly as good as the book. But I mean, I think partly it's because they didn't do big cockroaches. They chose to do lots of tiny cockroaches, which is fine, but I think the big cockroach thing is just so creepy. And this also could be my personal absolute fear of cockroaches. I hate cockroaches so much. They are fucking disgusting. They are so creepy and sneaky and fast. Um, they will wait until you go to bed and they'll come out in the middle of the night and hang out in your kitchen. And I was not prepared when I moved here because where I lived, when I lived in Minnesota, it was like, unless, and I don't want to, I don't want to denigrate anybody, but like, unless you're living in a garbage dump, like you probably won't ever see a cockroach, right? Because they just like don't hang out there. But here, they're just like here. In Southern California, they're just like here. They're here everywhere. They're in your garage. They might be in your house. You know, like we've definitely had them in our house. Um, my cat White Fang likes to catch them. She's brought me cockroaches. She's very proud of herself. She's brought me cockroaches more than once. And um, sometimes they're living still. So it's terrifying. I hate them. And I found out recently that I'm allergic to them actually. And like, that's not an uncommon allergy apparently. So maybe that's part of my fear. It's like my um, animal, my like amygdala, my lizard brain um, trying to get me to stay away from them, causing much fear. But this book is so great. It's so creepy. Um, it really goes there. The next book I'd like to recommend is The House Next Door by Anne Rivers Siddons. This was published in 1978. And this is the story of a woman named Colquitt I believe her name is, I never could figure out exactly how to say that, which did bother me. Uh, but she is an older woman. She lives with her husband in a beautiful house, a beautiful, like Southern beautiful house. And the lot next to their house, well, on one side, it's another house, but on the other side, it's been this like undeveloped plot of land. And so it's very like, wildernessy almost um jungly almost and she really loves it it like brings her a sense of peace so she's kind of bummed out when somebody finally buys the plot of land and starts developing it and um you know she ends up getting to know this young couple and they seem really great but like things keep happening during the construction of this house like bad things and eventually something so terrible happens that the family can't even stay there and so Colquitt sees these owners and you know they buy the house and bad things happen and it's like this cycle and it's like is the house causing this on purpose maybe you'll have to read it it's a really great book um it's definitely a little slower paced but it's one that makes you nervous, I think. It's very intense. I'd also like to recommend The Auctioneer by Joan Sampson, and this came out in 1975. This is a really great, like, small town 
story not necessarily a small town with a secret because like nobody's hiding anything it's more like this man named pearly uh moves to a small town and he is an auctioneer and he um starts these auctions right and he's encouraging the townsfolk to sell off their belongings and it starts out small it's like you don't need this this old bag of clothes that's been in your closet for 15 years but then it starts to get into like this family heirloom, that's just sentimental, you know? You don't really need it. And it gets more and more serious. He's asking for more and more and, um, like, at what point will he stop? And he's got, like, these goons that do his bidding for them and everyone's terrified to, like, go against what Pearlie says and he's, like, becoming very wealthy and the people in this town are becoming very poor and it's, um, such a serious little book. It's just insidious it's um oh, he's just such a little creep you know you just he has a character that you love to hate when you read this book next i'd like to recommend pin by andrew niederman this came out in 1981 and i think i love niederman so much because i was reading his writing without knowing it for years because um wouldn't you know he's vc andrew's ghostwriter so this is a book under his own name of course it's got some great step back art and this is about uh what are their names leon and ursula um they are siblings and when they're teenagers their parents die in an accident and their father he was doctor i believe i don't think he did anything too crazy but um, he was very analytical. Oh, his medical practice. Okay, so yeah, he was just a doctor, but he created this life-size anatomical thing um, called Pin. And he used Pin uh, when the children were growing up to explain bodily functions to them and things like that. So it, it was almost like Pin was an extension of their father. And now that their father has died, um, Pin has been helping them through this loss and this is another book that's a little slower paced but the payoff is so big and throughout this you're just like something's wrong here I know something's wrong here but I for one didn't really guess it until um, the end so that was really fun uh, it's just such a weird story with some weird things happening between these siblings and this anatomical model caught in between you know um yeah it just really is such a strange story but a really great one of course i mean it makes sense you know knowing the stuff that he wrote as vc andrews as her ghostwriter it kind of makes sense and that's probably why i like this book so much um but it's a good one it's a good one and it's just got great step back art um with creepy old pin. Then we have Crawl Space by Herbert Lieberman and this one was published in 1971. I read this just last month and let me tell you I really liked this. It was such a strange story. Um, in this we follow the Graves, right? Um, Albert and Alice and they are an older couple who live um, kind of outside of a small town in like this nice little cottage and they're just, you know, doing the things that they want to do now in their elderly age gardening and keeping up with the house and um the wife alice is a great cook so you know she cooks and she bakes and stuff and in the very very beginning of the story just like right off i was really surprised with the pacing of this because this really gets down to it um this man named richard who they called they needed somebody to look at their furnace and richard is the one who's dispatched to their house and richard takes care of their furnace issue but um, they start to notice something strange about, uh, some strange things in their basement. And eventually they realize that Richard, this young man who they don't even know, is living in a crawl space in their basement. And, um, things get really intense in this story between, um, the Graves and Richard and all the reactions they have to what Richard is doing is just so not what normal people would do, which makes this so interesting. It's such a strange book and it's like, it's almost like Richard has cast a spell on these people, but 
when you're reading it, like it's not really anything supernatural. And so that's what makes it so interesting. It's like, why would these people put up with this? It's so strange and it's so compelling. And uh, it's just, I have never read a book like this. It's so bizarre. So um, this was a fun one. It's not very long. It's easy to get through. It's got a cigarette ad <laughs> in the center of it, which is just so quaint. My last recommendation today is When Darkness Loves Us by Elizabeth Engstrom. This was published in 1985. And this is really um, a bind up of two novellas. There is one called Beauty Is and then the titular um, novel when darkness loves us and uh, when darkness they're both just so well written but um when darkness loves us is really the one that sticks with you i think and this is about um gosh uh sally ann and she is accidentally like locked in this tunnel system kind of that's like on her property and she lives down there and you're with her living down in this darkness and like seeing how she copes with this and um seeing if she's able to make it out and this story takes this very strange turn i mean like it's just very strange anyways because like how many i don't know of any other stories where a woman gets locked underground for years without anybody knowing that she's under there and like she doesn't die, she survives somehow, and it's so weird, right? It's so weird. The second novella in this, Beauty Is, is about this woman named Martha. Martha has some um, intellectual disabilities, and like that's very apparent. The author makes that very, very apparent, and some people like just don't treat her well in this book, which makes it a little bit hard to read at times, because you're like, Oh my god like this person is just trying to live their fucking life and everyone's just being such a weird dick about it you know and uh we come into this book and martha has recently lost her parents so she is um i don't know i i, I can't remember exactly if they t if they say in this story how old she is but um my memory of it is that she is maybe middle-aged right maybe like 40 maybe like a younger middle-aged person and um, nobody is really sure if she'll be able to take care of herself because of these disabilities she has. But you know what? Her parents, her mother, um, taught her very well how to do the basics, you know? And so Martha is, she's been on this, like, schedule almost, like, um, she's been rehearsing these things for so long that it just almost comes second nature, nature to her. But she also starts, like, remembering things about her past and it's like as this is happening um martha's becoming different and it's just such a really strange again a, a story i've never read before you know like some of these a haunted house story i've read that um killer bug story i've read that that doesn't mean, mean that those books are aren't good you know what i mean but like this is just so unique and strange and um I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you without giving too much away, but both of these stories in this book are so interesting and different, and um, Elizabeth Engstrom's writing is so beautiful. She's just got a beautiful way with words, and she makes these really tough, strange situations like, I don't know, uh, palatable? Um, they're terrifying and tragic and like beautiful at the same time so um don't miss out on her work pick up this i mean this was reprinted by valencourt books so it's very easy to obtain nowadays you don't have to hunt through um websites and pay an egregious amount for a copy um, you could just pay like 16 bucks for it or something like that which is excellent those are some of my very favorite vintage horror novels i'd love to know if you read older books like what are some of your very favorite um older horror books i'd love to know let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought about them let me know what you're planning on reading in october i cannot wait for spooky season thank you so much for watching i will see you guys later goodbye